money on this show we guide you on how to make the most of your money and build wealth so let's have a look at what we have on the show for you this week let's get started with tax planning and find out how equity linked saving schemes or elss fits in your portfolio and as always we help you with your financial portfolio and queries Well time and again we have all been guilty of taking investment decisions to plan and save tax at the last minute. Ideally tax planning ought to start from day 1 of the financial year, but for those who still are undecided, today we will tell you about one of the tax saving instruments which gives you the opportunity to invest in the equity markets. We are talking about ELSS or equity linked saving schemes and to discuss the same we have with us Hemant Rustagi CEO Wise Invest Advisors uh, thank you Hemant uh, for joining us here at Smart Money well you know it may be few months away but tax planning should always begin uh, from uh, day 1 but uh, if one is looking at uh, various uh, you know various instruments that help you plan and save your tax tax where does elss really fit in well prel i think there are two issues when we talk about uh, tax saving as you rightly said one i think it's ideally one should begin at the you know start of the year and the second is you know they should be rational for choosing a particular investment option now what's happening is as you rightly mentioned you know most people do not plan at the, at the start of the year uh, you know they actually wait for the fag end of the year and then abruptly start investing so you know some people start putting money in insurance some people will start putting money in ppf and somebody will start putting money in elss what typically happens is that if you if you plan it at the start of the year you know exactly how much money you need to invest for saving taxes and i think the most important part is you need to make investment for tax saving as a part of your overall investment strategy when you don't do that you end up investing in some of the instrument which may not be actually ideally suitable for you as far as elss are concerned as the name suggests these are equity linked saving scheme uh, the money primarily is invested in uh, equities so anyone who is looking to build up a corpus for a long term objective should be looking at elss you know unfortunately when we talk about any tax instrument generally people look at okay okay i need to put money for 3 years or something but that's not the way i think one should be looking at elss to my mind if someone is looking at you know getting the best return possible out of all the options that are available to you under section 80c i think elss is 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 up there of course considering the fact that the money is invested primarily in equities there are going to be a tendent risk of volatility uh, fortunately there are strategies with through which you can actually mitigate the risk of volatility and also get the best of you know the market returns uh, which is clearly means that invest for the long term invest systematically through sip uh, so i think if you follow that strategy ELSS can definitely be one of the best options for saving taxes. For the interest of uh, viewers, uh, Hemant, if you could also point out that while equity linked saving schemes also invest in equity uh, instruments and equity markets, really, uh, how do they differ from overall equity funds that are there? Uh, you know, how have the returns really worked as far as ELSS? funds are concerned could you share those perspective as well yeah sure i mean the, the fact is that basic difference between a, a normal equity fund and elss is the lock in period okay these are basically because they are you get tax benefits here like every other tax saving instrument there is a lock in period but the best thing about elss is the lock in period is only 3 year which is much lower than some of the other instruments which are available to you for saving taxes under atc uh, the other plain vanilla open ended fund means you can get in and get out at any point in time which is what you can't do here the minimum period is uh, lock in is 3 years but all the advantages that you get in equity fund because the money is going to be kept for at least 3 year the long term capital gain is is tax free the dividend that you get tax free but i would just like to you know mention here that anyone who's looking at investing in elss for the long term should not be looking at dividend payout option they should be it's very very important to choose the right option so they should be looking at growth option because ultimately the key to investment success in the long term is power of compounding and that can come only uh, when you go for growth option as far as the performance is concerned look there have been time periods where you've seen elss doing better now the reason for that is you know if if elss collect lot of money in the last 3 months of the year, financial year and if the markets are low it's quite possible that at some point in time you may see that elss have done better 
over the longer period, I, I have not seen much of uh, difference. But that's where I think some of the investors actually, uh, you know, make mistake of thinking that because ELSs have a lock-in period, the performance is going to be better. Well, there can be periods where you see this, these funds performing better as a category. But generally speaking, like I said, if you make it a part of your long-term portfolio, in terms of even return, I don't think there is much difference between open-ended funds and uh, ELSs. In fact, it is perhaps the only alternative, uh, really, Hemant, which is a pure investment uh, into equity, which is giving a tax benefit as well. And as an important mantra that you point out, that uh, while the lock-in is three years, look at a long-term horizon. How long should that horizon be? Well, I think it depends. Like, like I said, if, if someone is making ELS as a part of a portfolio which is being, you know, which has been created for creating a corpus for the child education. So if it is 10 years from now, that can be a time horizon. If someone has made it a part of retirement planning, it could be 20 years, it could be 25 years. But the point I'm trying to make is, while you make it a part of your long-term objective, okay, it does not mean that you will not track the performance. Yes, it is all right, because for the first three years, you cannot make any changes. But once you complete the lock-in period, Keep an eye on the performance. It's just not that because you're investing in equity, will not look at performance. Keeping a track of performance is as important as making the right decision. So as long as you see these funds, this category of funds, or the funds that you have chosen for your investment in ELSS are doing well, there is no reason for you to make changes. At some point in time, if you feel that the fund you are invested in consistently is underperforming and you have completed the lock-in period, uh, take out the money and in reinvest that money into the other fund, which may be a part of your any long-term goal. So keep an eye on the performance, manage your portfolio actively, but it does not mean that every three months or six months you make changes. How do you go about choosing uh, your ELSS uh, fund or ELSS scheme? How do you decide uh, what are the parameters that investors need to look into? Well, I think the parameters are not uh, very different. First thing is, like I said, the important decision to be taken is whether I should be investing in ELSS or not. Having made the decision, having considered or making a part of long-term goal, once you have decided that the money has to be invested in ELSS, two things you need to look at. One, clearly look at consistency of performance, uh, which does not necessarily mean that you have to look at only one year or two of performance. Uh, some of the ELSS have a very pretty long-term track record. Look at how consistently the funds have uh, done, vis-a-vis -vis the benchmark they may have, and also look at the category average. To my mind, I think con considering the performance vis-a-vis -vis the category average is very, very important because it's quite possible that most of the ELSS may have, you know, uh, done better than the benchmark. But when you compare other funds in the same category, you'll know exactly where the fund that you're looking to invest uh, stands. The second is, I think, look at consistency in terms of philosophies. Now. As per the ELSS guidelines, the money, at least 80% of the money has to be invested in equities. But uh, within that, the fund houses are free to devise their own strategy. Some funds may say they want to look at it as a multi-cap fund. Some may invest primarily in the you know, large cap. Some may invest in primarily in maybe index stocks. So these are two factors you need to look at. Once you've convinced that this is the fund that suits my requirement, go for it. Like I said, keep monitoring the performance, but don't be in a hurry to exit. My last question to you uh, is that while we tell most of our investors that please uh, plan your investments in advance and do systematic, uh, follow the systematic route, uh, route as that is the most uh, uh, helpful and advantageous for uh, investors, what if uh, someone is having a lump sum and is looking to invest in ELSS, what would you recommend? Well, there is nothing wrong with it. See, but the fact is that uh, because equity markets tend to be volatile in medium to short term, it's always advisable that if you invest systematically. Uh, but what I've also seen over the years is that a combination of lump sum and systematic works very well. Now, even if one does not cannot invest on a monthly basis, you can still stagger it. You, I mean, if you plan it at the start of the year, you don't have to necessarily put all the money. Maybe you can put once in a quarter. You know, even though you're investing for the long term, putting lump sum would actually means timing the market. And timing the market is not something that works for you. So it's not necessary that you have to invest through SIP. If you can't do that, you can still stagger it maybe once in a quarter, once in six months, and still get benefit of averaging. All right. Uh, Heman, thank you so much for joining us as always and guiding viewers as to how they should uh, probably look at ELSS as one of the alternatives uh, for planning their tax uh, and, of course, uh, look at their financial goals more importantly, and see if that ELSS fits in their financial goal or not. Thank you once again, Eamon, for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Well, time for a quick.